So it's the amp on. Yes. And that it's all plugged into the splitter. I'm disappointed we didn't buy a microphone so we can stand. Oh, you yeah. ready? The king. <laughs> the king. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you want to run what up? Is your, it? Do you want to run up your phone? What's the game plan? All right. You run off your phone. You Maybe turn it down on the. Hey, do you want to describe what it is? What is it? <laughs> uh, it's a fridge. Party fridge. With integrated speakers uh, and LED visualizer, but a bit of the LED visualizer is broken. But we're going to fix it. If you are filming, keep the band that's not on. Out which, which one doesn't know then? Uh, one of the ones on it. You'll see, you'll see. You have to edit it out, right? Yeah, yeah. just put the black light down. <laughs> well, it looks like loads of it's broken. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, can, we can fix this. Oh shit, I'll just stab myself. <laughs> Is it not working at all? Hang on. Oh. Oh, no, no, yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Is, what's cool. wrong with the amp? This is perfect. Lots of it is breaking. So. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Well, at least it's this is what happens when you use um, chewing gum to hold it together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's working. Yeah, I have to like, hold it down, mate. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gents, the bass fridge. Oh, it's, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of these wires somewhere. Do you think it's the? Uh, do you think it's the splur? Oh, we'll fix it later. Yeah, we'll fix it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 One of these wires. Yeah, we we yeah. Alright, <laughs> next thing. Alright. Inside. Now you know the lights go off on the outside. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. The party fridge. <laughs> <laughs> That's as good as it ever was. It was good vision. Yeah. Cool. We're right. not quite ready to meet the uh, mic? droid's um, <laughs> tech monitor challenge. So, no, when you deploy like a web app, sorry, it's really uncomfortable. When you deploy a web application, um, what I've done is written something so that it goes out, does all the tests, and then actually deploys it on the servers. I thought, well, why don't we actually create like a hardware version of it so you can see the status of it? So I thought it would be really simple. I said to Zach yesterday, I was like, no, it's going to be too simple. I think it's something more complex. And it was quite difficult because, firstly, trying to use the Arduino to connect to the university's uh, internet, or the internet was quite difficult because half these internet ports don't work. Um, and then I've kind of forgot how difficult the Arduino is to work with because it doesn't even handle strings and, yeah, it becomes a bit of a nightmare. So all in all, it does actually work. There are two LEDs. Green means it's deployed, and the yellow one means that it's actually deploying it at that point in time. So I hit rebuild. Hopefully, it will now go to yellow, and it does that whilst it's running all the tests, deploying it, and then it does go to green in like three minutes' time. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> that is using a server. I had to use, I had to move some stuff over to a separate Node.js server, which is now running in New York because I hit the wrong button. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is working. That's the that's the uh, push thing. And in the future, we're to see. Which part is that? So is it testing? Is it deploying? Which servers is it deploying to? But yeah, I just thought that worked. Cool. Nice. Those who haven't, um, we've built a device which is a belt. Um, we have an Arduino here with a Bluetooth module um, and a series of vibration motors. Hold up. There, 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 there. My fault. Those vibration motors. Um, Learn a lesson there then. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Always keep a date. So there is. <laughs> don't use Windows. The idea being that you, you have two people and two players, each controlling from a separate computer, and you have a fight. Remote controlled humans. I call it Super Cyborg Wars. So whether that's technically what, right or not, I don't know. <laughs> Is the um, aim to sort of hit the electronics off the other person? <laughs> no, the aim is just to hit them in the head. Um, originally it was supposed to go around your waist, but John's a bit... Um, <laughs> it, so. Should you be encouraging people to aim for each other's head? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, it's no fun without it. Okay. That's what boxing's all about, so you know, that's yeah. acceptable. There we go. So, I'll do a quick demonstration here. I'm not against it, just to be clear. <laughs> Especially if John's still plugged in. This code was written by Cleo, by the way, to my eldest daughter. And by the way, John, 
the future. Which is the most important part. Brings out the curves. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And we spawned. Is uh, that? I think that's better. No, it's, it's actually not. That's that right. So, yeah. So you can imagine how you could drive this towards someone else and then suddenly start whacking. What's that? Is that a tip? Wait, this is my time. <laughs> It definitely needs further work, but we're really pleased with what we've done today, and I think we're going to do <laughs> some more with it later. <laughs> yeah, today I've been doing this. <laughs> really, which is uh, an Arduino and two inertial measurement units made of gyros and accelerometers, which are each three axis for each gyro and accelerometer. Uh, which basically, the chip is an MPU6050, which is what's in your smartphone probably, or the little flying quadrotors and so on. Um, so it will measure your pitch and the other one, roll. Um, and in fact, we have to combine the data from both the accelerometer and gyro. So the gyro is very accurate, but only measures or gives you data when it's moving. So it doesn't know which way up, up is absolutely. Uh, the accelerometer does, but it's not very accurate. It's very slow. So the idea is to combine the data from both of those to get an envelope of motion all the way around in all three axes. Um, and I've also made two of them work on one Arduino. So these are individually addressable by bringing a pin high there are various libraries um, to support these that do the maths for combining the sensors and filtering them. Uh, but I couldn't hack that code because it's very complicated and written by MIT. Or several people at MIT who put comments in that so they don't understand the other person as part of the library. <laughs> so hacking it to work um, with both simultaneously proved quite hard. So I've taken the very simple code that reads the raw data, which I can easily hack to read from two by just having two lots of code, one reading from each address. Um, and then try to do the math myself to combine and filter the gyro and accelerometer, which I've done before because I built a robot that balanced on a ball with a different unit, uh, which did all of that. And I haven't quite got the mixing working properly, but um, it looks like I can read both of these and mix the data and get the actual degrees of rotation in all three axes. So the plan is to build a motion capture suit, which is why I need two of these. And in fact, I need 10 of them. So the plan would be that this would represent one arm so it would, one the sensor would be on the upper arm and one on the lower arm, and the same with the legs and also the body and head. So you could have a wearable um, motion capture suit. So that opens up several possibilities, including being a Jedi and controlling the droid with motions. Yeah. Uh, perhaps having an animatronic head in a costume that um, sort of, you know, is controlled by body language. So having a, an angry posture to open the jaw or something like that, or a surprise posture for ears and things. And then I started thinking about prosthetics and how perhaps you could um, train a prosthetic arm to move based on the body language of the rest of the limbs and the position of the body and head. So if I go to pick something up, it's kind of a specific pose that would mean you could potentially, with the position of the other limbs, control your other arm and with the position of your head and perhaps eye tracking you could make your hand move into the right place. So that's another thought that um, could be quite useful. Uh, potentially for, you know, it's almost brain control, but um, the sort of thing where you have to train into it with the rest of your body language. It could be quite a cheap solution because um, these chips are surface mount in a QFN package and they come on a roll. Uh, with a breakout board I think those cost £3.50 each. Obviously Arduino's, you know, ten a penny, so you could build something quite cheap, uh, perhaps for the uh, developing world, for prosthetics, mm. something like that, so sort of future development. Cool. All right. Add Bluetooth and the same as his accelerometer to my watch project. I, and I added a smoothing cap. That's massive. <laughs> that's, that's the joke. It was ridiculously overpowered. But yeah, so I've had mixed success with this. Uh, James has been able to talk to these Bluetooth modules, but I have not. No. So there is still work to be done there. Yeah. Did you get the inertial measurement unit working? No, I haven't. I, I powered it and the light comes on, oh, so right, I count that as a success. <laughs> yeah, it will be later. So yeah, that's, that's all. <laughs> A form of gesture system 
where you have like your most used, it recognises your most used applications, and then you have either probably moving into each corner of the screen or the camera. So left hand side will probably open Firefox, right hand side would open Thunderbird, or top would open um, like terminal or something, and then you put your hand in the middle of the screen, it will wave it out a bit. It would shut down the computer, but I couldn't even get the <laughs> software installed on three different operating systems. So, yeah, it didn't go 100 percent to plan, but it's, it, it's <laughs> good in theory. <laughs> Just takes a bit of tweaking, I think, and eventually I might get it working if I can pick one up cheaply. But yeah, cool. <laughs> what I was planning to do today is making kind of a procrastination tool. So whenever you have assignments in class or stuff like this and a deadline, what this allows you to do is to send emails 24 hours ago <laughs> uh, with attachments included. So yeah, 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 yeah. So look, I'm not good at like HTML and this kind of stuff, but the terminal uh, version works quite nice. So we can have a look at this. If I can increase the font size. Okay, make a Chrome extension. Yeah. As always with demos, you have to install the new term. Um, anyways, so the, what it allows you to do is to Just the terminals the <laughs> <laughs> so you can specify where you want to send it to, and in this case, I have kind of a just a random email, freshgrassyum at gmail.com, <laughs> and you can specify the subject. So we can say maybe like Pompey three uh, message Fugar, and we can include any number of attachments, but let's just use the video for me. And if we run this, there's some random data, so we have a unique email, some machine. And now it should have been sent, and if we look at this gmail account, <laughs> Attachment <points. laughs> So that's basically it. I was trying to do like a bench face. Yeah, as you can see. Um, which it works for sending you know, <laughs> Yeah, so it works for sending emails. <laughs> I haven't had time to implement like the attach from browse, but I mean the yeah the terminal has this functionality, so it should be quite simple. But that's it. <laughs> Today I tried Phaser, which is a JavaScript game framework. So yeah. I uh, went through the tutorials today and made this. <laughs> so for now, you got this guy right here, and it takes the arrow keys as input, and the, like now when I'm walking, it changes the frame, it uses a spike sheet, so when I walk, the frame of the sprite sheet would change. So when I go left, it would use the leftwards sprite. How many sprites are on each sheet then? Do you know? Um, well, this character is nine. So. I for each foot three. moving forward. Then. I don't know. It is so each foot moving forward. He's got a different frame. Um, three for left and three for right, and then the middle 
like now it's facing towards you. That's one. So uh, total of seven. <coughs> mm. So yeah. Cool. Good job. Have you won? <laughs> Team, I, what I really, really want was, was like a, it was described as a speedometer, but it's actually a, it's a lightometer, and by using a, a LDR, light dependent resistor, um, and a servo, it moves around, depending on the light levels, moves different amounts, um, so I don't quite know how I'm going to use that one yet, but <laughs> it was just a uh, proof of concept, so that's all I'm trying to play with at the moment. Did you have fun doing it then? I did. <laughs> yeah. That's what it matters in the day, isn't it? Yeah. So that's I guess why I spend all day doing that really. And laughing at my boy trying to get the connect with Oh jeez, appreciate that. <laughs> cool. Assisting. At yeah. times. I'll I'll give you that, I'll give you that. But you used my job, so Oh sorry, sorry, sorry Debian. Yeah. <laughs> 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 don't use Windows. <laughs> No, it's just he, he, he prefers the um, aptitude package manager over Pac-Man. That's all. I've done a bit of programming, bits, bits and pieces here and there. And for you guys, I suppose it's like trying to watch a chimp open a door. <laughs> but I, with some help from Mark, I didn't manage to do that. And I managed to get, do you know the blink one, the very first one? So the blink one worked, and then I got four in a row and managed to get them to flash in sequence at different times. So. I was uh, inordinately proud of myself for that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to film it for posterity. <laughs> so that's what I managed to do today. Cool. What were you up to, Charlie? Oh, uh, I, I was creating a Super Nintendo controller emulator. So the idea would be that rather than an actual like control pad, a, a game controller plugging into a Super Nintendo, you'd plug in a well, the original idea was plugging a Raspberry Pi, and that would control the Super Nintendo. But there was timing issues with that, so I tried an Arduino, and then there was, uh, I'll say, implementation issues rather than lack of knowledge issues uh, regarding that platform. So it's still a work in progress, but I did manage to get it to stop powering off the snares every time I plugged it in. <laughs> so, so that's, so that's good. I, I solved a sh an electrical short in about 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Will that use vision recognition to look at the screen and then uh, play the game really fast? That could be a possibility. Um, the like final end, the, the be all and end all of it would have been like a tool assisted speedrun tool. So you'd plug it into the Super Nintendo and just basically like feed yeah. it button presses as fast okay. as you can to play games as fast as you can. Um, in reality I want it to navigate menus for me because I'm really lazy. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that, 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 that's about it. Um, one is a sort of developer matchmaking system. I've talked to you a couple of times. Oh, talked to a couple of people about this today. Idea of matching up developer profiles with jobs. Um, so the idea being developers create profiles, upload assets, and clients will come to us and sort of say, right, I've got this project with this specification, can you match me up with this developer based on profiles you create? I've also been given a bit of thought to my final project uh, using a Raspberry Pi um, to track accessibility. So for me, getting around can be a bit of a pain in the ass, <laughs> um, to put it politely, but uh, I want to use a Raspberry Pi to track motion and so, for instance, probably for what you guys take for granted is getting up and down curbs can leave you flat on your face. Um, but I want to try and use a Raspberry Pi to collect all that data and maybe plot it on the Google map. So the idea being more people in wheelchairs use Raspberry Pis with this sort of data on it, I can collect it and plot it. So you could say, right, take me from here to Commercial Road, but take me a place where there's no cobbles and I'm going to find it the easiest route based on what other people what other people are, are saying about the, about the route. So that's pretty much I've been giving some thought to that today as well. So nothing cool. out of proof of concept. Right.